Greetings to you all in Uganda at Abley 2022 and I'm sorry that I cannot be with you I, as you are viewing and and hearing this I am literally in the air uh, en route to the UK to take up my appointment as Secretary General of the United Bible Societies but it's a privilege for me to share with you this morning on the pastoral and spiritual resources for mentorship. I have in my office, and always keep wherever that office may be, my father's 1911 Luther Bibel. My father was uh, German speaking. And I, le I leave it open to the verse that is his confirmation verse. Psalm 73 and verse 24. Du leitest mich nach deinem Rat und nimmt mich endlich mit Ehren an. You lead me according to your counsel. And in the end, receive me with honor. Now, that verse for me describes my father's life. Because my father, in example, more than in word, but also from time to time in word, was one of the key mentors in my life and it it was because and I've reflected on this as I've grown older it was because he himself was led by the counsel of God he was by no means a perfect person as none of us is but he consciously chose to be led by the counsel of God and that is the, the first resource that I want to, to highlight today. That in order to, to be a mentor to someone, we ourselves must be grounded in the Word of God. It is through the Word of God that we find the counsel of God. And uh, this is very clearly set forth in Psalm 1. And I'll read it to you. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his Lord day and night. The person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. So, a life grounded in the word with with roots that run deep into the soil of god's word is the first resource to be a true mentor so don't be a tumbleweed there was a there was a town in california called victorville that was once buried in tumbleweeds Strong wind had blown them in off of the Mojave Desert and caused a crisis. Of course, a tumbleweed is, can grow up to six feet tall, but it, it, when the wind comes, its roots are so shallow that it just tumbles along the ground and so it plants its seeds randomly and not always in good places. Be rather like a tree, Psalm 1. That's what God's Word is, is encouraging us today with roots that run deep and fruit that is born in season and seeds that are intentionally planted in the lives of others. Secondly, we need to follow before we can lead. There are three great metaphors for God in the Old Testament. That are picked up in the teachings of Jesus in the New Testament. God the builder, and Jesus says on this rock I will build my church, and the counter side to that was of course God who could also break down. God the farmer, who plant and reap, and God the shepherd. Jesus picks up on the metaphor of God the shepherd in the well-known passage in John 15 where, where he refers to himself as the good shepherd and he says, my sheep 
know my voice and they follow me. So a mentor who sows intentional seeds and can lead into the lives of others and can lead others is, is one who himself or herself is following Jesus. Uh, a friend of mine and my late professor, one of my late professors at university, uh, wrote a series of little cards, uh, which he called Thought Stoppers. And one of those Thought Stoppers is titled Thought Stoppers for Fools. And it reads, the biblical book of Proverbs mentions seven kinds of fools. The average one is willing to learn from common sense and good advice, as well as from their own and others' failures and corrections. The other fools won't heed mankind or God. So, we follow Jesus. We learn from our own failures and corrections. And so we too can then lead others. We cannot expect from others what we are not willing to do ourselves. And I believe mentorship is far more, as was the case with my father, about who we are and how we are than what we say. It's about what we do. A life grounded in the Word of God, a life following Jesus, and then we come to the second metaphor for God in the Old Testament that I want to pick up on, and that is of God the farmer. Jesus references this um, metaphor in his beautiful um, analogy of himself as the vine and us as the branches in John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. There you go, farmer, gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The effective mentor is one who knows and understands this reality. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. So it's not just a question of following Jesus and his counsel, through a life grounded in the Word, is staying connected to Jesus. Staying connected to Jesus. But of course, mentorship is not an individualistic thing. Very often we focus on the mentor and the mentee and the relationship between those two, which is a, a, a bilateral relationship. Uh, and we, be, we, understand, we think only of, of mentorship as, as this one-on-one -on -one kind of individu individualistic um, experience. John Donne, in his 17th meditation, coined the phrase, no man is an island. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were. This was clearly before Brexit. As well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own were, any man's death diminishes me, because I am involved in mankind, and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. 
John Donne is, is describing something which we here in Africa call Ubuntu. We are who we are through others. And mentorship, true mentorship, occurs in community. It's a well-known well phrase, a common to, to different cultures, that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think, again, here in Africa, we, we understand that, perhaps better than most. So too does mentorship take place in community, in a framework that constructs meaning and reflects the role of the individual mentor in relation to the person he or she is mentoring. There are 59 one another's in the New Testament. Anyone who reads the New Testament as an individualistic story between me and Jesus or me and God is not understanding the New Testament. 59 one, one another's, love one another, accept one another, Bear one another's burdens, pray for one another, and so on, and so forth. It's a worthwhile exercise, one day in your, in your quiet times, or your times alone with the Lord, just to go through those one another's in the New Testament. So, the fourth resource, spiritual resource for mentorship is, the community of faith. And within the context of the community of faith, that we disciple one another. Because the New Testament word for mentorship is discipleship. And so I leave with you these, these four Resources for mentorship, a life grounded in the Word of God, a life following Jesus, a life connected to Jesus, like the branch to the vine, a life or lives in community, lived in the community of faith. And as I draw to a close, three A's that summarize or sum up uh, the character of true mentorship. And the first is authenticity. It's about being real in ourselves, not being perfect, not hiding our weakness or our failures, but it's how we ourselves deal with those that help others to deal with them too. Authenticity, another one of the, the thought stoppers from uh, Professor, ne Professor uh, Neville Hoyer is called the thought stopper for professors. Uh, he says, when a man professes to be a Christian, the test is his household, his wife, his children, his employees, his dog and cat. Do they see the difference in his lifestyle? We could say it. When a person professes to be a Christian, the test is his or her household. Her husband, her children, her employees, her dog and cat. Do they see the difference in her lifestyle? Authenticity. The second A is acceptance. It's acceptance of the person that we are mentoring in their Completeness and imperfection. I think we're familiar with the danger that is often exhibited by fathers when they try and live a life or do things that they didn't get to do in their own childhood and youth through their sons. That's not a very good style of mentorship. I was once watching my son play rugby on the sidelines. We were standing as parents on this school field 
And at a certain point, one of the fathers in the opposing side literally ran onto the field, picked up his son, and shoved him back into the rock. I'm not sure that inculcated a love for the game in that young lad. Acceptance of who we are and who others are. Crucial for mentorship. And the third A is affirmation. Affirmation. The power of affirmation. The power of affirmation over criticism. Yes, there are times when we need to ask for accountability, but affirmation lives in the person's mind and heart and forms that person's character. Three words that I remember my father saying to me, and I didn't get to talk to my father before he died, because he died very suddenly. But these three words live on in my mind and have been a tremendous encouragement to me ever since. And that he said them to me not long before he died. He died in 2002. It was after a service I had led at the church I was serving at the time. And he came through to my office and he looked at me and I just saw in his eyes his love for me. And he said to me, son, you're terrific. Those words will live on forever. Hugely powerful. And just consider the power of your words to those who are looking to you. To those who may be seeing you as an example, as a mentor. And don't hold back on the affirmation and the kindness. Because that will help that person to accept also the correction. Authenticity, acceptance and affirmation. And friends, in closing, it's so crucial that we understand the purpose of trouble and suffering, including weakness and failure, if we want to be mentors. Because it's in those times that we grow. I'm pretty sure we can all look back on our own lives and how much more we've grown through the, the tough times than we've grown through the times when everything seems just to be going to be going well. And these are the, the crucial times for those whom we would mentor to redeem those times, as Paul says in Ephesians, redeem the time. Understand what Paul says in Romans that in all things God works for the good. Remember that. That verse doesn't say God works everything for the good. He says God works in everything for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. And that's really what we want to establish in the lives of anyone we would mentor, that they discover what God's purpose for their lives is. And so I close with the words of Paul to the Galatians. Uh, because this is the final uh, counsel from God's Word as a resource for mentorship. Lives grounded in the Word of God, following Jesus, connected to Jesus, living lives in the community of faith. Let mentorship be an expression of authenticity, acceptance and affirmation. And finally, keep in step with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God lives with us and in us, and Jesus in us through the Holy Spirit. And here is a beautiful description of the character of a mentor. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. I trust that these few words and thoughts might be of help to you as you reflect on your role as a mentor and on the pastoral and spiritual resources that are available to us. Because indeed, God has given us everything we need. Thank you and God bless you.